As recently as February of this year, it was thought that a SpaceX booster was going to crash into the moon. They even identified which SpaceX mission it was, a particular rocket that sent out a mission all the way out to Lagrange Point 1 between ourselves and the moon, and so it was thought that it was this particular mission, as you can see right here, that was going to result in a collision with our natural satellite. However, after a great deal of study, it was determined that the mystery booster did not belong to SpaceX at all. And then it was determined that the Chinese were the guilty party, if you can call it that, the ones that had a piece of space debris that was about to smash into our natural satellite, producing not only a crater, but also a substantial cloud of debris that would climb several hundred kilometers out into space simply because the moon only has one-sixth the gravity that the Earth does, there's no atmosphere to get in the way of any sort of debris plume, and on top of that, the rocket was traveling very, very fast. However, the Chinese steadfastly denied and continue to deny that their rocket had anything to do with this. And by the way, what you're watching right now is not that particular rocket, but rather a rocket that was launched in 2014 called the Chang'e 5 T1 mission, T standing for test. The T-1 mission was particularly sensitive and secretive at the time in 2014 when the Chinese program was not nearly as advanced as it is today. Now, why they were so secretive about this mission is something that I have a hard time understanding because it was a simple orbital mission around the moon, an orbital return mission to test out whether or not they might be able to send out a future mission to land on the moon collect samples and then return, which they did, by the way, successfully and with a great deal more coverage in 2021. So why all the secrecy at the time and why the denial currently? Well, in my opinion, and this is extreme speculation on my part, but it goes hand in hand with the mysterious double crater that this collision left it might have something to do with a ULA mission that was designed for a very specific purpose back in 2009. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... Have you ever wondered how we really know that there's water ice at the lunar south pole? Yeah, we can take all sorts of spectrographic analyses and that sort of thing, but the mission that really determined just how much lunar ice we're dealing with that down there was the L-Cross mission way back in 2009. A spent Centaur rocket on top of an Atlas V that launched the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter also carried the L-Cross probe, and the L-Cross would be released at the last moment before the Centaur upper stage collided with the moon. The upper stage would then produce a massive debris plume, hopefully including a lot of water ice, and the L-Cross would pass through it, gathering as much data as possible before it too crashed into the moon. By the way, these created two craters, obviously, because you had the Centaur colliding with the moon and, of course, the probe colliding with the moon shortly thereafter. But here's what was very interesting about the mission. Really, not a great deal of data was expected because the probe would only have a few seconds to gather it before it, too, collided with our natural satellite, and yet it gathered a tremendous amount of information, including lots of data about water ice. Both L-Cross and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter picked up hundreds of kilograms of water ice while they conducted their observations of the debris cloud that was thrown up by the Centaur upper stage, and in addition to that, they found lots of other interesting stuff, including carbon dioxide and also more than 100 kilograms of mercury, something they didn't expect to find as well. What this proved is that these shadowed areas of the moon 
moon can prove to be traps for various types of elements that you're not going to find elsewhere on the moon that gets exposed to sunlight. But these regions that have been permanently shadowed for billions of years may contain elements that we really need if we want to establish a long-term presence on the lunar surface. And this strangely configured mission proved to be invaluable to our future studies of the lunar south pole. Indeed, we really haven't collected any sort of substantial materials from the lunar south pole since then. This is the only up close and personal study that we've made of water ice at the lunar south pole, but it's sufficient evidence to indicate that there is lots of water ice there, certainly enough to support a future lunar base. But what does this have to do with the collision that just took place? Well, once again, this is extreme speculation on my part, but what if a secondary mission of the Chang'e 5 test mission or the Chang'e 5T mission was something similar? Because keep in mind, the mission took place a mere five years after this particular mission from NASA. Well, first of all, it's important to note that the collision took place on the far side of the moon near Hertzsprung Crater, in other words, out of sight of any terrestrial telescopes. Also, the LRO was not in a position to observe the exact impact, which means that if a probe were released from this mysterious stage at the last moment in order to conduct observations, we would have no idea that this had happened. Now, if this was indeed the case, could could it have communicated back to Earth somehow? Well, actually it could have. The Chinese Space Agency actually has a communications relay satellite in a halo orbit at Lagrange Point 2 to provide continuous communications access to all of their various probes that they have on the surface at the moment, including theoretical probes that might be on the far side, which means if this was some sort of intentional mission, they certainly could have communicated communicated data back to Earth. But once again, why the hell would they want to keep this a secret? Well, it's possible that things were simply so secretive back in 2014 that there could simply be a blanket directive to keep everything associated with this mission under wraps until they get all of the results. Another possibility would be that there are particular elements at Hartsprung Crater that the Chinese are interested in, Perhaps radioactives, perhaps some kind of rare metals, things that we haven't detected yet that they wanted to get some more information about. And they decided to carry out a mission very similar to L-Cross. And yeah, I admit it, I'm toying around with conspiracy theory gibberish at the moment. However, I'm not a big believer in coincidences. This is the first time that any man-made object has unintentionally hit the moon. And at the same time, it's also the first object to create this unusual and strange looking crater. And at the same time, the one nation that seems responsible for having sent out this rocket in the first place is denying that they had anything to do with it. All three of those factors combined make me a little suspicious. That's all I have to say, and I really think that we might want to analyze this region a little bit more thoroughly just in case there might have been a reason for the People's Republic of China to intentionally send a mission to determine the composition of this area way back in 2014. If you like this type of content when I go out on a limb every now and then, Check the description. There are many ways to support my channel. Also, smash that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell button every time you want to be notified when one of these strange videos hits YouTube surface. And as always, stay angry about space!